first time since the Cold War, Russia has arrested and charged an American journalist on accusations of espionage. That's Evan Gershkovich of the Wall Street Journal. Today, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken demanda, demanded that Russia release him. Let's bring in my guest tonight, former CIA agent and global affairs expert Laura Ballman, who's up late with me tonight on The Final Five to talk about it. Laura, good to see you again. Hi, Jim. You too. Uh, these are heavy accusations here. And the question is, when you look at an American journalist, is it possible that this idea that Evan Gershkovich is a spy has any credence to it? Absolutely not. It's utterly ridic ridiculous. Having started my career as a U.S. Uh, reporter, including overseas in the former Soviet Union, and then joined the CIA, I can tell you Absolutely, there is no way he is a spy. The CIA does not use U.S. journalists as cover. Doing so would be illegal, a violation uh, subsequent to the church hearings in the early 1970s. Also, frankly, doing so would put other journalists uh, in harm's way. Finally, why on earth would the CIA or any other intelligence organization pay to have a journalist tell them something when journalists tell everybody everything they know? <laughs> uh, when, we look at, when we look at the accusations here, uh, I looked at the Wall Street Journal today. There was a headline that said he loved Russia, the country that turned on him. What, what are we looking here in terms of determining what his, what his positioning was, why he was there, and why Russia decided to target him? Well, Mr. Gershkovich is a first-generation American. His family fled the Soviet Union. And so he grew up absolutely American, loving the United States, while also uh, speaking Russian at home. And therefore, he had or has a love of the Russian culture, history, art, literature, while not loving the the authoritarian dictatorship of Vladimir Putin. Now, Putin uh, targeted him for four reasons. The first is that because he speaks, he being Mr. Gershevik, uh, speaks Russian, the Kremlin couldn't control him the way they might be able to uh, influence a foreign reporter who has to use a, uh, a, a translator. Because if one speaks fluent Russian, then one overhears things, one understands what people are really saying. So that's number one. Number two, uh, Vladimir Putin wants a swap. He is uh, very concerned uh, about a man named Sergei Cher uh, Cherkozov, who is a known GRU, that's a Russian intelligent, military intelligence officer, who posed as a Brazilian citizen in order to come to the United States and go to Johns Hopkins uh, Graduate School and then uh, try to get a job with the International Criminal Court. He was subsequently arrested, has been indicted by the United States, and is currently in prison in Brazil. So part of the Kremlin calculus is could we possibly swap uh, probably Paul Whelan as well as right. Ms. Mr. Gretsch for this journalist? And the third reason, frankly, is that uh, the Kremlin wants to show their power despite declining leverage in traditional ways such as energy, uh, which you know Europeans are now learning how to survive without Russian uh, Russian energy. So those are the three main reasons that he was targeted. And I should add as well, the quality, the content of Mr. Gershkovitz's uh, reporting is, or what was, has been superb. He's, try, he's covered things such as the uh, Russian shortage of ammunition to use in the war on Ukraine. What kind what of evidence would, would Russia hypothetically try to show to the world saying that this man was a threat to us? Yes, there is a war going on. Yes, the U.S. and Russia are at odds right now. Um, you mentioned Paul Whelan. I know Brittany Griner came out and also joined in the calls to have, uh, to have Mr. Gershkovich released. But what, 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 what's Russia's game here? What do they show? How do they prove that they're right and the rest of the world is wrong? 
Sure. They're, they'll provide some sort of trumped up evidence. It could be I, probably one of two types. The first could be traditional, quote unquote, spyware, you know, brick and mortar things like I, I don't, a disguise and say, oh, he was carrying this preposterous. The second type of evidence could be uh, some sort of purported email allegedly collected via cyber. You know, those are the two sort of types of evidence one could, a fake evidence one could expect. There's also the possibility that they, they being the Kremlin, could force uh, human beings to uh, falsely testify against this reporter. That's also possible. You know, I, either way, Russia's showing, hey, whether you're a Russian reporter or an international reporter, we're going back to the Cold War days where you better stick to the party line. The, yeah. We don't believe in the free press anymore. We, uh, we were going to talk about this last Thursday with you, and we had to postpone it yeah. because of other events, and we were hoping maybe it wasn't going to be necessary for you and I to have this conversation, but clearly uh, this continues back and forth, and as this story develops, uh, we will depend on you for your expertise. Laura Ballman, thanks for joining us. Always good to see you, unfortunately, under these circumstances, but that's why it's good to have your expertise. Thanks for having me. And the final five is back after this.